طيب يا اخوان كويشن give me the context of the narration of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma manaka ma manaka an tafta alayya in nisit what prevented you from reminding me when I forgot who was the Prophet sallam talking to and what was the context of that statement Huh? Nah. Tayyib? Hmm? La, 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 la. La, la. Go ahead, say it again. Nah. He was reciting in, in, the, in the salah and he forgot. An ayah. And when the salah was over, he said to Ubay ibn Ka'ab, you said Ka'ab ibn Malik, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, he said, Hal sallayta ma'ana? Did you pray with us? And Ubay said, Naam. And then he said, Ma mana'aka and tafta alayya in nasid. What prevented you from reminding me when I forgot? What does that say about Ubay ibn Ka'ab? Well, yeah, but aside from that, Huh? If the Prophet ﷺ said to him, What prevented you from reminding me when I forgot regarding the recitation? What does that say about Ubi ibn Ka'ab? He was from the great memorizers of the Quran, Ya Ikhwan, from the great reciters and memorizers of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From his specialization. From his specialization. Khair, inshallah. That narration, the Quran Shaykh al-Albani brings it in Sifa Salat al-Nabi regarding the matters of correcting the Imam when he forgets. Bismillah wa salatu salam ala rasulillahi yamma ba'd. We continue, the Quran, with the statements of Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, hafidahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of Kitab al-Muqaddimah from the Sunan of Ibn Majah. And he's talking now, Ikhwan, about the different types of a'mal, the different types of actions, the different types of deeds. In the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Aqul, al a'mal arba' asnaf, wa la khamisa laha hatta sa'a fi ma na'lam. The shaykh said, actions or deeds are of four types. There are four types of deeds that we don't know of a fifth until this time of ours, until this moment, to this very moment. Ahaduha, first, ma kana khalisan lillah wa sawabin ala sunnah. The first ikhwan is that which is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is done in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course the Shaykh Ikhwan is giving us more information on his statements, statements, actions, and belief. So he's talking about actions right now. First, is that which is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is in accordance with the sunnah. The second, مَا كَانَ خَالِسًا لِلَّهِ وَلَيْسَ صَوَابٍ عَلَى sunnah. What is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's two. Number three. مَا كَانَ صَوَابٍ عَلَى السُنَّةِ وَغَيْرَ خَالِصْ لِلَّهِ The third is that which is done in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but is not done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fourth. مَا كَانْ غَيْرَ خَالِصْ لِلَّهِ وَلَيْسَ صَوَابٍ عَلَى السُنَّةِ That which is not done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solely and that which is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's repeat that. That which is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's one. Two. 
What is done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three, that which is in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but is not done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And four, what is not done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, out of those four, which one or which of them are acceptable? Only the first one. Only the first one. Out of the four categories, the only one that is accepted is the first one, that which is done sincerely for the sake of Allah and that which is done in accordance with the sunnah. The Shaykh says, هذه الأصناف الأربع ليست كلها مقبولة عند الله so from these four types, not all of them are acceptable. It's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Maqbool wahid minha, only one of them. al-awwal, it is the first. Limada, the annahu jama'a shartain. Because it meets the two conditions of the acceptance of any deed. Again, it must be done solely and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it must be done in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They have only been commanded to worship Allah alone, ascribing no partners with Allah in worship. So it must be done solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as found in that verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ عَمِلَا عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدٌ Whoever does an action that is not in accordance with this affair of ours, it is rejected. So there we have Ikhwan in that ayah, and there we have in that hadith, that if an action does not meet those two conditions, it is not acceptable. Do we not find Ikhwan in the narration of those individuals who were in the masjid, and they were dhikring in an innovative fashion? And so the point, Ikhwan, they had circles. And at the head of each circle, there was a person saying, Sabbihu, and he say, Subhanallah, Kabbiru, say Allahu Akbar, so he that. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari witnessed this. And he went to the home of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Radilahu anhuma. And Ibn Mas'ud, when Abu Musa told him what was going on in the masjid, he asked him, well, what did you say? He said, I didn't say anything. I was waiting to hear what you had to say. Now this is Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, a scholar from amongst the companions. But Ibn Mas'ud was his senior, his elder in this affair. So he wanted to wait for his statement. So they get to the masjid, we know the narration, many of us know the narration, and Ibn Mas'ud confronts them and he asks them, well, what is this that, we, that you're doing? And here are the companions of the Prophet in great numbers. Here is the bowl of the Prophet that's not even broke yet. Here are the garments of the Prophet that are not even tattered yet. Meaning, how close are you to the sunnah, but how fast you have deviated from that affair. So they said, well, it's only dhikr. We're supplicating. Supplication is an ibadah, it's a good thing. We only intend good. And then he made that most famous statement, Ikhwan, and how many people intend good, but did not achieve it, did not attain it. So again, the mere fact of having a good intention alone is not sufficient. It must also be done in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we see in the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in the action and the understanding and the application of the noble companions. Shi'ubi, we continue. It is ikhwan al-ikhlas illah and al-mutaba'a lil-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is first and foremost, of course, that sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the following of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa qala ahl al-ilm kathalik العامل إذا فقد الإخلاص لله كان رياء وشركا. And Sheikh Rabi says that the scholars have said that if an act is devoid of sincerity, if it is devoid of sincerity, it is رياء. It is showing off, wanting to be seen. It is شرك. وإن فقد المتابعة لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان بدعة. And if it is devoid of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is an innovation. It is an innovation. وَمَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فَهُوَ رَدٌّ 
We have innovation in this affair of ours, that which is not from it, it is rejected. A fundamental principle in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ya aqwan. Whoever innovates in this affair of ours, that which is not from it, it is rejected. In the other wording, we know in Muslim, whoever does an action that is not in accordance with this affair of ours, it is rejected. Now the ulama have explained the meaning of the different wordings here. Look, ikhwan, at the comprehensive nature of the sunnah. Prophet ﷺ said concise words with comprehensive meaning. So the first narration, as the scholars have said, and Shaykh al-Uthaymin explains this, ikhwan, in his explanation of the 40 hadith, the first narration that says whoever innovates then that takes care of those who begin with the innovation those who start the innovation and then if somebody tries to come along after them and say well I didn't start this I'm celebrating the prophet's birthday you know out of love of the prophet I didn't start this well the second narration whoever does an action that's not in the course with the fair about it is rejected that takes care of those who come after them so those who started and those who worked by it afterwards are all included in those two narrations. Allah, if you can look at the comprehensive nature of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. continues. He says, Ikhwan, Allah, if you can, when jama' al ikhlas lillah wal mutaba'a, if it combines between, if it combines between sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal mutaba'a, if it again comprises sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is the action of Ahl sunnah It is the action of the people of Sunnah. The action of the people of it Tawheed. Kana Amal al Mutashari'een. The action of those individuals who follow the Sharia, the affairs of the Sharia, الذين يسبعون الشرع في أقوالهم وعمالهم ومعتقداتهم, those who follow the Sharia in their statements, in their actions, and in their belief, in their statements, in their actions, and in their belief. Sheikh Rabi continues, ومن هنا كان ابن ماجة ومن سبقه مثل البخاري ومسلم ومن جاء بعدهم من أهل الإمامة في العلم والدين يهتمون بدعوة الناس إلى السنة. Shabbat says therefore, إخوان, from here, this point, we see, we recognize that Ibn Majah and those who preceded him from the likes of Al-Bukhari and the likes of Muslim and those who came after them from the people of the imams of knowledge and religion, they concern themselves with calling the people to the sunnah. They concern themselves with calling the people to the sunnah as we see it, and this is what we find in their works. This is what we find in their works. Qal Musannif rahimahullah, now we get to the narrations, in the chapter, first chapter, inshallah ta'ala, that was something of an introduction. باب اتباع سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So in Kitab al Muqaddima, Ikhwan, he says in the first chapter, the chapter of adherence to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So again, Ibn Majah begins his book with adherence to the Sunnah. Because of, as Shaykh Rabbi mentioned, the great importance of adherence to the Sunnah, first and foremost, in our lives, in our teachings. In our families, in our homes, in our masajid, it begins with adherence to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. An Abi Huraira. An Abi Huraira. Radiallahu anhu qal. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma amartukum bihi fa khuduh. Wa ma nahaytukum anhu fa intahu. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whatever I have commanded you, do it. Whatever I have commanded you, do it. And whatever I have forbidden you, abstain from it. Abstain from it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He says, and this is now, Ikhwan, we're reading from the noble scholar Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Adam al-Thiyubi. 
Rahimahullah Ta'ala again in his explanation of the Sunan of Ibn Majah. And again, Ikhwan the Shaykh concerned himself himself Rahimahullah Ta'ala with the explanation and the clarification of these tremendous works of hadith. And to the point, Ikhwana, there was a recent biography uh, written about Shaykh Muhammad al Fiyubi. He died not long ago, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And in this biography, it mentions Ikhwan that when he became sick, when he became ill, his only concern was trying to finish the, the explanation of a tirmidhi. That was, that was his yani, focus to the point Ikhwan, where he hated to even have to go in for certain tests and spend time in the hospital. Actually, this because he said it took him away from working on the, the explanation of a tirmidhi. This is how serious it was for him, Ikhwan, to work in the books of hadith. Rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'ah. He says, Ikhwan, Badal Musannif, Rahimahullah, Kitabuhu bil Basmala. He said that the author, meaning of course here Ibn Majah, Muhammad ibn Yazid al Qazwini, Ibn Majah al Qazwini, Abu Abdullah, he began his book with the Basmala, Yani Bismillah, Ir Rahman Rahim. Ittiba'an al Nabi, in following the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Haith Khan, Yusaddir Biha, Qutabahu il al Muluk. Now, we just dealt with this when we were in Minnesota. When we were in Minneapolis, who was there in Minneapolis? Tayyip. The Prophet ﷺ sent letters to which kings that you can remember? How many? Huh? Tayyip. The brother, go ahead. What you, what you got? You said six. Qaisar. Kisra. Hiraqal, Najashi, I'm out. What we got after that? <laughs> it was in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Ikhwan, let me see you. Huh? That's Qaisar. Hiraqal. Tayyib, la bas, Ikhwan. Go back to your notes, inshallah ta'ala. Hayakum Allah. The Shaykh, he says, Allah, let me see you. In following the Messenger of Allah وسلم, who began his letters to the kings with the Basmala. For those of you who remember what we studied in, in Minneapolis and we talked about that and the importance of that. His letters to the kings were غيرهم كما ثبت ذلك في قصة هراقل As has been authentically reported in the narration of the story of Hiraqal as the brother mentioned. وقصة صلح الحديبية and other than that from the different affairs. From that which is reported by the two shaykhs, Al-Bukhari and Muslim, and other than them, مُوَافَقِتًا لِلْكِتَابِ وَمُوَافَقَتًا لِلْكِتَابِ الْعَزِيزِ And also, Allah be with you, in following with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, حَيْثْ إِنَّ الصَّحَابَةِ يَفْتَتَحُوا كِتَابَةَ الْإِمَامِ الْكَبِيرِ بِهَا يعني meaning that the noble companions in compiling the Qur'an, they began the different chapters of the Qur'an, of course, with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So in following that, we find from the imma, the imams of the sunnah, we find them opening and beginning their books, of course, with the basmala. As we see here from Ibn Majah. He says, after this, ikhwan, I He says, after this, Ikhwan, I believe you, وَتَبِعُهُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ جَمِيعٌ مِنْ كَتَبَ الْمُصْحَفِ بَعَدَهُمْ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَمْصَارِ And the people who came after them, who recorded and wrote the Mus'haf, the Qur'an, after them, they followed them in this regard. And years back, Ikhwan, we did uh, a lecture series on the tremendous chapter in the Sahih Imam al-Bukhari, the history of the compilation of the Qur'an. The history of the compilation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the likes of that is mentioned there. al Ithubi continues, Ikhwan. An Abi Huraira. An Abi Huraira. Radiallahu anhu qal. Abu Ali ibn al-Sakin. Ikhtalafa fismihi. Abu Ali, Ikhwan. Abu Ali. Ibn Sakin, he says that the scholars differed regarding the name of Abu Huraira. 
The scholars differed concerning the name of Abu Huraira. So some of the people of Nasib, they said his name was Umair ibn Amir. Some said his name was Umair, Umair ibn Amir. وقال ابن اسحاق and now he's missing from some of the historians قال لي بعض أصحابنا عن أبي هريرة كان اسمي في الجاهلية عبد الشمس ابن سخر now here's a narration إخوان directly from Abu Huraira that states that he says that my name during الجاهلية was عبد شمس عبد شمس ابن سخر فسماني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الرحمن. So in this narration, he says that it was the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that named him عبد الرحمن. Because commonly, إخوان, we we hear that his name was عبد الرحمن بن سخر. That's probably one of the more accepted names, يعني or positions as it relates to the name of Abu Huraira. So in this narration, he mentions that his name was عبد الرحمن. وَكُنِّي تُ أَبَا هُرَيْرَ And I was given the kunya, Abu Huraira, لِأَنِّي وَجَدْتُ هِرَّ Because I found a cat, a small cat, فَحَمَلْتُهَا فِي كُمِّي And I used to carry it around in the sleeve of my garment. I used to carry it around in the sleeve of my garment. فَقِيلَ لِي أَبُو هُرَيْرَ So the people just started calling me Abu Huraira. طيب. And then he mentions after the Shaykh Ikhwan, Shaykh Al-Thiyubi, rahimahallahu ta'ala, an Ubaidillah ibn Abi Rafi' qala qult li Abi Huraira lima kunnita li Abi Huraira He said, I asked Abu Huraira, why were you given the kunya Abu Huraira? And he said, kuntu ar'a ghanama ahli wa kanat li hirra shagira fa kuntu adu'uha billayl fi shajaratin وَإِذَا كَانَ النَّهَارَ ذَهَبْتُ بِهَا مَعِي فَلَعَبْتُ بِهَا فَكَنُّونِي أَبَا هُرَيْرَ Now one of the things that we benefit from this narration, Ikhwan, is what Shaykh Abdul Muhsin said. He said, when you combine between the different wordings of a narration, because you may find in one narration one wording, in another narration you'll find additional information. When you combine those narrations together, it gives you a fuller, more complete picture. An example of this is the narration of Jibreel, the hadith of Jibreel. In one of the narrations, Ikhwan, as Shaykh Abdul Muhsin mentions in his explanation of that narration, one of the wordings says that the Prophet ﷺ was sitting on an elevated sort of mound off of the ground, something elevated off of the ground. Again, so as to make it easier for the people to see him. So when you read that narration, Ikhwan, you gain a benefit that you don't in another wording that doesn't have that. So now you combine those narrations together and you get a fuller picture. And to the point where Shaykh al-Albani rahimahallahu ta'ala has a book on the Hajj of the Prophet sallam kama rawahu Jabir. As it was related by Jabir ibn Abdullah. As the ulama have mentioned because it is from the most complete yani, narrations regarding the Hajj of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what is important is in the text, in the book, what Shaykh al-Albani does, he brings the main narration but what he does ikhwan, in brackets he brings different wordings together to give a fuller picture of the narration. So you see him doing the work of taking the different wordings and putting them all together to give the reader a fuller picture of the hajj of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the work. So in this narration, it says, Abu Huraira said, I was a shepherd for my family's flock. I, took, I was herd, used to herd my family's sheep or like this. And I had a small cat. At night, I would put it in a tree, yani inside of a tree or by the bottom of a tree or like this. And during the day, I would take it with me and I would play with it. And so therefore, the people named me or gave me the kunya Abba Huraira. And it shows us, Ikhwan, the permissibility of keeping pets, yani animals as pets, as long as one treats them kindly and properly. And there's also the narration of the companion with the bird. Who remembers the narration of the companion with the bird? No one remembers the narration, the, the companion with the small bird? Khair, inshallah ta'ala. What was the other homework I gave y'all? What was the other homework? Tell you, man, now add this, add this to the list, inshallah ta'ala. Yani, the companion, Allah will be the fikum, 
who had a small bird. Tell me the story of the small bird with the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was Anas ibn Malik's brother. I'll give you a hint. Now. So he said, Abidus, Ikhwan. So during the day, I would take it with me and I would play with this kitten. Again, this gives us a fuller picture. Well, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, And the Nabi Wasallam said, Oh, Ya Aba Hir. So in another narration, he mentioned the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, he said, Ya Aba Hir. And now we said, Ikhwan, fi mawadi' min kutubihi. And again, this is Sheikh Muhammad with you, be again narrating. In several places, and now he says in his books, Ismu Abi Huraira, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhar, Al Al Asah. He says that what is most correct is that his name is Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhar, Min Thalathin Kaulan, even though there are many narrations, many statements, so many different statements as it relates to his name and the name of his father. His name and his father's name. قال البخاري بخاري سرق وان رابع عنه نح الثماني مئة من أهل العلم. and Imam al-Bukhari said that when 800 odd scholars narrated from Abu Huraira, 800 odd, يعني number, يعني scholars narrated from Abu Huraira من أهل العلم. الله يبارك فيكم. وكان أحفظ من روى الحديث في عصره. and he had the Yani, he was the most, the person who memorized the most narrations of his time period. And as Ibn Hajjah mentions regarding him, Ikhwan huwa hafid al-Sahaba, he was the memorizer of the companions. He was the memorizer of the companions. He says, Ikhwan, regarding Abu Huraira, أكثر من روى الحديث في ذهره Again, he narrated more narrations than anyone during his time. وهو الرئيس المكثرين السبع من الصحابة رضي الله عنهم والمكثر من الروى فوق الألف. and he was at the head of the his companions were known as المكثرون. and المكثرون are, the, are those companions who narrate more than a thousand narrations. more than a thousand narrations on the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. now I always do this. what are the, who are the seven? in order. In order, Abu Huraira, Masru is not in the seven. Huh? Aisha, not in order, I want him in order. We said Abu Huraira. Hey, Ibn Umar. Anas Ibn Malik. Aisha. لا 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 فوجابة عبد الله بن عباس جابر أبو سعيد القدري طيب write this down I did this a million we did this a million times إخوان المكثرون في رواية الخبر أبو هريرة ويليه ابن عمر أنس في زوجة النبي البحر جابر مع القدري so they put it in some lines so, so to make it easier to memorize. Again, al mukfirun fi riwaat al-khabar. Those who narrate the most narrations, as we said, over a thousand from the people of narration are Abu Huraira, wa yalihi ibn Umar, and after him ibn Umar. For Anas, then Anas ibn Malik, for Zawjatun Nabi, of course, meaning Aisha here. Al-Bahru, Abdullah ibn Abbas al-Bahr, Jabir ibn al-Khudri. And then we have Jabir ibn Abdullah and finally Abu Sa'id al-Qudri Sa'ad ibn Malik. So those ikhwan are the mukfirun from the companions. And Abu Huraira, of course, is at the head of them. As for Abu Huraira, ikhwan, he related 5,374 narrations. 5,374 narrations. Ibn Umar who is after him, narrated 2,630 narrations. Ibn 
Anas ibn Malik Ikhwan next narrated 2,286 narrations our mother Aisha radiallahu anha narrated 2,210 narrations Ibn Abbas narrated 1,696 narrations and I could tell you how many are found in Bukhari and Muslim but let's just stay with the number itself so as not to go too, too deep and finally Jabir oh, I'm sorry Jabir one, 1,540 narrations 1,540 narrations and then finally Abu Sa'id al-Khudri 1,170 Narrations, 1,170 narrations. And Ikhwan, again, this shows the precision of the scholars of Hadith. And I should make a point here, Ikhwan, and sometimes people question or ask about, for example, when Imam al-Bukhari says he memorized 100,000 narrations and like this, and people get the impression that that means 100,000 different wordings. That's not the case. When we talk about this idea of yani, Hadith, of 10,000 Hadith, 100,000 Hadith, that means with the chains of narration, the different chains of narration. So each different chain is considered a different hadith in that regard. Okay. All right, we're going to read a little bit more, Juan. And then we'll go for the evening, inshallah ta'ala. Let us read now, Juan, from Shaykh Abdul Muhsin. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, after mentioning the noble companion Abu Huraira, and we'll continue with one tomorrow as we read, because in his other narrations, Abu Huraira, of course, narrates. So we'll continue in his biography a bit, give more information about him. There's very important points as it relates to Abu Huraira that I want to cover this weekend, inshallah ta'ala. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, he says, Ikhwan, Badal Imam ibn Maj al Muqaddima bi Bab al Tiba al Sunnah. He says, Al Imam ibn Maj began. His yani, muqaddimah, his introduction, with the chapter adherence to the Sunnah. He says, Ikhwan, and choosing the, this chapter, and choosing this particular chapter as the precursor to the other chapters, and that which relates to creed is a sound choice. This is a sound and solid choice from Ibn Majah. Again, he begins with creed first. That's why Sheikh Abdul Mashin is saying it is a sound choice. Because as we said before, it is the foundation of the affair of our religion. If that is not solid, that is not correct, then everything that comes after the Quran falls apart. And in this, choosing this chapter, he says, in this is precision and comprehensiveness. In this, he says, is precision and comprehensiveness. Look what he says, Ikhwan. And that's because it is general, and that which comes after it branches off from it. And that which comes after it branches off from it. Because in this, Ikhwan, we find the adherence to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the following of that which he came with. And in this is obedience to Allah and his Messenger. In this we find obedience to Allah and his Messenger. And this concerns everything that he came with. Listen to this, Ikhwan. This concerns everything that he came with. Whether it is in the matters of creed, or the acts of worship, or mutual dealings between the people, or issues of character. All of that is included in following and adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of that ikhwan. So again, whether it's in matters of creed, in acts of worship, in mutual dealings between us, in matters of character, all of that is under 
the affair of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ikhwan and that is why sometimes Ikhwan it amazes me when the people talk about in trying to praise some of the people of innovation and disparage some of the people of the sunnah they say things like you find the people of innovation have with them good character they say good character we heard an individual Ikhwan disparage the Salafis Claiming that the Jamaat of Tabliq had better character than the Salafis. And we'll get to that inshallah ta'ala. However, we say, Ikhwan ibn Afikum, as Shaykh ibn Ubaz, he mentioned that the, the, the greatest affair of character is a tawheed. It's a tawheed. What is better character than the Muwahid? Than the one who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So, what does it avail the Tabliqi? The tabliqi who have at their, from the foundation of the affair of their creed, is the worship at the graves. We know this ikhwan, they have with them the turaq of the sufiya. Sufi paths that can be found in the creed of the jamaat of tabliqi. So what does it mean now ikhwan, and they walk in the, in the room and they, they lower their heads and they're humble. And they smile and, and they shake your hand and all of that stuff ikhwan, but we have with them ikhwan affairs of shirk. Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. What kind of character is that? What character is that, Ikhwan, that an individual would, would disobey the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah? What kind of character is that? Rather, Ikhwan, alhamdulillah, the sunnah have the best of character. Because they understand that everything that comes with the following of the sunnah is what we mentioned in matters of creed, in matters of worship, in mutual dealings, and in character akhlaq in general. All of that falls into the category of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who adheres more to that than Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So he says, Ikhwan Abil Fikum, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, Qul thalika yadukul taht al tida'ah. All of that is included in the meaning of following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is bil aqidah. So it's not limited only to the affair of al aqidah, as we mentioned previously, even though it is the foundation of the affair. So his commands are to be followed. His commandments are to be followed. Sallallahu alayhi And his prohibitions are to be avoided. One must stay away from that which he prohibited. And his statements are to be believed. His statements are believed. وَيُعْبُدُ اللَّهِ تَبَقًا لِمَا جَاءَ بِهِ صَلَوَاتَ اللَّهِ عَلِيهِ And he says, Ikhwan, that Allah is worshipped in accordance with that which he came with. That Allah is worshipped in, in accordance with that which he came with. So again, let us go back. He says, Ikhwan, his commandments are to be followed. One. His prohibitions are to be avoided. Two. His statements are to be believed. Three. And Allah is to be worshipped in accordance with that which he came with for. And we will see as we continue to read tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, and Sunday. That these four matters continue to show up in the explanation of the following of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is comprehensive, ikhwan. It is inclusive as it relates to these issues. Shabbat al-Muhsin continues. From that which is known. أن اتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم هو مقتضى شهادة أن محمدا رسول الله. And so he says, Ikhwan, that it is known that the adherence to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم necessitates, what the shahada necessitates, is following the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in this regard. He says, so the meaning, or the state, the meaning of the statement that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, he says, لِهَذَا فَكُلُّ عَمَلٍ مِنَ الْعَمَالِ لَا يَكُنْ مُعْتَبَرًا وَلَا مَقْبُولًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِذَا تَوَفَّرَ فِيهِ شَرْطَانٍ He says, Ikhwan, and therefore, any action, any deed that is done, it is not recognized, nor is it accepted, unless it meets two conditions. And we already talked about this when we read from from Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri Hafidhullah Ta'ala I heard it 
Naam, it must meet two conditions. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin says, Al ikhlas lillah wahda. First and foremost, it must be done sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal mutaba'ah lil rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And secondly, it must be done in accordance with the following of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And again, Ikhwan, and this is something Shaykh Abdul Muhsin would say quite often, Ikhwan, as it relates to the affairs of the creed or the affairs of the minhaj and the fundamental principles of the religion. You're going to hear the same things from Salafis in different times and different places. So if you ask a Salafi in China, you ask a Salafi in Spain, a question as relates to these affairs of creed, you're going to get the same answer in different languages. And that is the affair of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ya Ikhwan. That even if we may be separated by oceans, that which unites us, Ikhwan, is the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wassalam. Now, he says after this, Ikhwan, بِأَنْ يَكُونْ مُطَابِقًا فِي سُنَّةَ الرَّسُولِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And that it is in agreement with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم This is what is intended by المُتَابِعَ بِأَنْ يَكُونْ هُوَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ الْمُتَّبَعَ فِيهِ That the Prophet ﷺ is the one who was followed in that regard كَمَا جَاءَ الْأَمْرَ بِذَلِكَ فِي آيَاتِ كَثِيرًا As is found in many verses in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And we understand from this ikhwan Allah ibn Rafiqum that the Prophet ﷺ is the imam of this ummah. He's the imam of this ummah. Allah ibn Rafiqum. And he is the one to be followed as it relates to that. And then the Shaykh says after this, what ikhlas wa muqtada shahada an la ilaha illallah. And that testimony that nothing has the right to be worshipped except for Allah necessitates sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not merely lip service. It is not merely a statement upon the per, per, a person's tongue. It is an action. It is a belief. It is a statement. Huh? So it is not merely a quran of it. A statement it necessitates a quran sincerity for the sake of Allah in word and in action. He says, just as al mutabaa, just as al mutabaa, he says, that statement that the Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah again necessitates that one follows the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, it's not a matter of mere lip service. One says that the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, he must follow him in that which he came with. He must obey him in his commandment, in that which he commands. He must refrain from that which he prohibits. He must believe that which he related. And he must worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon that which he came with. Again, those four matters that we mentioned previously, Ikhwan. It is not a matter of just lip service. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمَ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ What did Allah say in the Qur'an, Ikhwan, Ali Imran? Ayat number 31. In the meaning, Ikhwan, he says, Say to Muhammad, to the people, if you truly love Allah, so the people say, we love Allah. Well, if you truly love Allah, follow me. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you do, Allah will love you. There's the condition. You want to gain Allah's love? Follow the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow his sunnah. If you really love Allah, follow the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you follow his sunnah, sincerely, Allah will love you. And will forgive you of your sins. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So what is the condition there, ikhwan? The condition there, ikhwan, is obedience and following of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A condition for truthfulness of one statement that they love Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love Allah in truth? Follow the sunnah. You want Allah's love? You want to earn Allah's love? Follow the sunnah. And you'll learn a lot, earn Allah's love in the Lahir Ta'ala and on top of that you will have your sins forgiven. So in following the sunnah, ya ikhwan, is that which brings about the forgiveness and the pardon of sins. This is a tremendous affair, ya ikhwan, we find in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. فَاتِّبَاعَ rasul. So following the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فِيمَا جَاءَ بِهِ مِنَ الْوَحْيِ عَنَ اللَّهِ so following the Messenger of Allah and that which he came with from revelation from Allah. The Sunnah is revelation. Revelation from Allah. That's why we say Al Wahi. Mashid al Wahi. Allah Ibn Fiqh. Ikhwanuna. Allah Ibn Fiqh. 
This is, this is a must, this is a necessity. The truth is not known except by way. The truth and guidance is not known except by the way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu And by way of that which he came with. And except by way of that which he came with. We'll finish this page, inshallah ta'ala, ikhwan. And then we'll adjourn until tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. We'll finish this point here because he goes into an entirely different point after this, inshallah ta'ala. So we'll, we'll read this last point here, inshallah ta'ala, and then we'll, if there are questions or issues, we'll deal with them and then we'll, we'll break till tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. فَالْإِتِبَاعَهُ أَحَدَ الشَّرْطِينَ الْأَسَاسِينَ لِقَبُولِ الْعَمَلِ He says, so following the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is one of the two, two fundamental conditions for the acceptance of a deed. يَقُولِ الشَّيْخُ مُحَمِّدِ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْوَهَّابِ رَحِمَهَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي بَيَانِ شَهَادِهِ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He says that uh, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, and in clarifying the meaning of the shahada, that the statement in the shahada that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, وَمَعَنَ شَهَادَ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ طَاعَتُهُ فِي مَا أَمَرُ Again, now look at the definition that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab gives. He says that, the meaning of that testimony that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah means to obey him in that which he commands. وَتَصْدِيقُهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرُ And believing in him in that which he يعني, relates. وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ وَزَجَرُ And refraining from that which he prohibited and rebuked. Three. وَأَلَّا يُعْبَدَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعُ And that one does not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by that which he legislated. That four again. So we see that those four points from Sheikh Abdul Muhsin and of course now he is quoting that directly from Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. Four points, four points. And then he says after quoting that Sheikh Abdul Muhsin he says ikhwan Allah bari fikum ya'ni la yu'bud Allah bil bid'ah wal muhdathat wal munkarat التي ما أنزل الله بها من سلطان and he says what is intended here is that Allah is not worshipped by way of innovation Allah is not worshipped by way of innovation or newly invented matters or munkarat and the contradictions and the likes of this of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave no permission of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave no permission as it relates to those things وَهَذَا الْحَدِيثَ الْأَوَّلْ أَوْرَادُهُ الْإِمَامِ بْنُ مَاجَ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ Shaykh Abdul Muhsin continues this first narration that Ibn Maja reports, collects on the authority of Abu Huraira قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ Prophet Sallam said مَا أَمَرَتُكُمْ بِهِ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever I have commanded you, take it وَمَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever I have forbidden you, abstain from it طيب, so we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, ikhwan, and we'll pick up tomorrow. Bidni lahi tabarak ta'ala. If there's anything, ikhwan, let's deal with it now, inshallah ta'ala. Ayakum Allah. No. No. The Avan. No. <laughs> um, inshallah that'll help you that's, that's, that's a guiding point inshallah ta'ala. good question by the way that's an excellent question that's a brother who's paying attention to the lessons hey, what else anything else you want uh, tell you, the four points again it is to obey him in that which he commanded to obey him and that which he commanded. To refrain from everything he prohibited. Now he stay away from everything he prohibited. To believe everything that he said. 
and to, and, and to only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which he legislated or that which he came with. That follows the tibar. Those four affairs, that's the definition as Muhammad Abdul Wahhab and Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, other than them, as we'll see tomorrow, all of them give those same four points as it relates to a tibar. Ahsan. No, no, no. Hmm. So the first one is, are those who their action is done sincerely for the sake of Allah and in accordance with the Sunnah. The second are those who the action is not done sincerely for the sake of Allah, but it is done uh, in accordance with the Sunnah. What's the other one around? So you flip it around. So the action is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but not in accordance with the Sunnah. Right? Tayyip, Allah bari So you're asking me, is the second one who? That their 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 that their yani their intentions are sincere, but the act it could be a person that's ignorant. Allah be the Could be a person that's ignorant. Allah be the Hayakum Allah. So they're since they're sincere, but the action is not done in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nah, it could be a person who is sincere, and it could be an innovator. We just mentioned the narration of those people who were in those dhikr circles. We mentioned the people who were sitting in those dhikr circles, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud came to them, and he and he said. What is it that you were doing? And they said, we're only vickering. We, we only intend good. And he said, how many people intend good but do not achieve? And now it's important that we understand at the end of that narration, that's collected by Adadami, by the way, Adadami. At the end of the narration, the narrator mentions, or Ibn Mas'ud says, and Allah knows best, perhaps many of you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned a people who you'll be jealous of your prayer next to their prayer, your fasting next to their fasting, but they will leave Islam faster than the arrow goes to the hunted animal. Describing the khawarij. Describing the khawarij. And Ibn Mas'ud said, and Allah knows best, perhaps you will be from among them. And the narrator said, I look on the day of Naharawan, the day of the battle between the khawarij, the khawarij fighting the, the, the companions, the people of the sunnah, and the majority of those who were in those dicker circle, circles were on the battlefield fighting against the companions and the, and the, and the tabi'in and the likes of this. So the scholars have used that as a, as a point of reference when Imam al-Barbahari says the innovations begin small, resembling the truth, and then they devolve. Right? They devolve after that. So in that instance, clearly those are people of innovation who they, their actions were, Allah knows best sincere according to what they say, but their actions were not in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So now, nah, Meshach, it could be a person of innovation who falls into that. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the last point that you mentioned about mm. uh, the shahada, the meaning of the shahada, yeah. for example, someone is, who wants to come and enter into Islam, yeah. but he's uh, someone from, you know, Ahl al Kitab. لا لا لازم يعني الشهاد استشهادة تين يا أخي لابد فيكم. You have to clarify that. يعني how can an individual now say that they believe in the worship of Allah سبحانه وتعالى alone upon what? Upon their own هوا, their own desires, upon يعني the methodology of يعني this one or that one. لا it must be يعني in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And it is a necessity that they testify that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. It's a part of the Shahadatayn. Hayakum Allah. So we, we clarify to them. And we clarify and we teach them and we explain to them. And we give them evidences and proofs in clarifying the Shahadatayn and the meaning of the Shahadatayn so that the people understand that which they are stating and that which they are accepting. Well, if the person rejects the Messenger of Allah, so said, and they reject Al Islam. How can they say that they accept the Islam and they reject the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? La ibn Fikum. La. La. It's disbelief. It's disbelief. A person rejects the, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and they reject the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is kufr. It's disbelief. The person disbelieves. If you don't believe in the Yani, in the shahadatain, the entering of Islam, you, you testify that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger. If you reject that, that's kufr. It's disbelief. You disbelieve. 
Allah be fiku. It is a necessity for a person to enter into the religion of Islam that they believe in the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever obeys the Messenger has obeyed Allah. <laughs> As Allah says in the Quran, Allah be fiku. There's a tremendous work in Quran for those who are interested in this particular topic. Bashik al Albani, Rahimahallah Ta'ala, called Manzilatu Sunnah fil Islam. The place of the Sunnah in Al Islam. Is it translated? The place of the Sunnah in Al Islam. Tremendous, small, small risala, small work. Uh, but he deals with all of the likes of these issues that you're asking about now. One more, inshallah. We, if there's one more, if not, we'll end here, inshallah. Time. Any specific, uh, I'm just curious to know, like, we have Kutub al Sitta. Mm. Is there any specific uh, reason you choose Ibn Majah? Like, well, I chose Ibn, Ibn Majah because Kitab al Muqaddimah, because of this particular book, and because of يعني, what it has, what it contains from the fundamentals of the Sunnah, and because the scholars concern themselves with it. We have an explanation, as I just mentioned, mentioned to you from Shaykh Abdul Muhsin. I saw it out here. Somebody has the book. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad yani, explained it, clarified his meaning in his explanation of Ibn Majah. Shaykh Rashid Ubaid, yani, he also yani, spent time yani, uh, uh, putting together this explanation of the Muqaddimah of uh, Ibn Majah. And in the likes of uh, Shaykh Muhammad al Thiyub, and other than them, Allah Ibn Fikum, who dedicated time to reading and teaching and explaining and clarifying the meaning of these narrations which are a fundament of the fundamentals of the sunnah. So like the book, Yani Kitab al-Sunnah from the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, we taught that before in the past, the likes of Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi who focused on Yani clarifying and explaining that particular work. So because the scholars have concerned themselves with these books and because these books are, as we said, yani teaching us the fundamental principles, these narrations are from the fundamental principles of the sunnah, as we've been reading tonight from the different themas of the scholars. And this is why we chose this work. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala.